Welcome back to Barnsley Music. My name is Barney. I'm a classical composer and founder and director of Barnsley Music. In this series, I'm going to be presenting my opera ballet called Slumbo. Okay, so again, this is music from my opera ballet, Salambo. So there are many important characters in this opera, but for now, we're going to focus on Salambo, who is sort of like a princess, we could say, and Maso. And Maso comes from the military. And Carthage, which is the main superpower... They have a small city, but a very powerful city, and they hire people from all over the region. So it's like a, an army of many, many different nationalities. This took place in like 300 BC. So Maso is at a festival. They're having a, like a celebration, and he see, she sees Salambo singing and, and talking to the soldiers, and he falls incredibly in love with her. However, this love, of course, is deeply forbidden. In addition, he has an assistant named Spendius, who is Greek, and lived most of his life as a free man, but was captured by Carthage and was enslaved, and then freed by Matho and his men, and because of this experience harbors a deep hatred and resentment towards Carthage, the superpower. And so what he does, Spendius, you know, this former Greek slave, is he rallies or he motivates uh, Maso to go to Carthage and to do an evil act in order to start a war. But under the guise of, oh, this will get you to Salambo. But Spendius, of course, just seeks, you know, vengeance. Now, it should be mentioned that there are some legitimate grievances that the mercenaries have. Again, Carthage is a superpower, but they hired lots of other nationalities to be particip participate in their wars. And so Spendius, this former Greek slave, he goes with Matho to Carthage, okay, and they go to the sacred temple of Tani, this is, you know, a polytheistic theistic religion, and they steal her sacred cloak. which, of course, is grounds to go for war. You, I mean, it's hard to understand that today, but just think about like some brutal, brutal you know, act of aggression that a country could take to another country or some kind of small group. And that's exactly what the equivalent is at this time. They stole like, kind of the symbol. This was like the symbol of their power. So Maso steals the cloak, he puts the cloak on, which you're not even allowed to touch it, and he feels incredibly powerful, and he's like, you know, let me go to Salambo, I can have her now, okay? So 
So Maso goes to the palace where Salambo lives, deeply, deeply forbidden. Keep in mind, he's from a different race, different nationality. She's from like the aristocracy, a pure race. So it's like very forbidden for him to go into a woman's room. And he goes up the stairs and then he sees Salambo. Let me play the music again for you. So he feels like this immense power. He's come back from the sacred temple. He has a cloak. He's going up the stairs. He's like, ah, I'm on top of the world. I actually hear like lots of brass and shiny, like it's very juicy. Okay. Then what happens? So he starts to dream, right? He's just like going up the stairs, but the confidence is waning, even though he has this sacred cloak that's there to protect him. And he's like having doubts, like what if she doesn't love me? Which, you know, he has all kinds of insecurities. Who And keep in mind, Maso ends up being the general of the army. <laughs> <laughs> And what is that music there? Well, that's where he actually gets to her room and he sees her sleeping. I mean, I, I can't do it in a way that sounds, looks seductive, but he finally sees her before it was just an imagination. You know, it's a long time since he, he saw her in person. And he goes to her room and he sees her sleeping and he's like, just stunned at her beauty. And then what happens? 